Good morning, and welcome to this webcast about decommissioning a Link 2013 deployment. My name is Brenda, and I'll be the English dubber for this webcast made by Fabricio Volpe, Microsoft MVP on Directory Services. In the agenda, we have the steps you need to completely remove the servers, pools, and settings. At the moment, the only available document is for Link 2010, but it seems to be a good reference also for Link 2013. My deployment is made up by a standard edition front-end Link 03.link.intra and by a Link Edge server Link 09. Also, I'm not moving my users from a Link deployment to another one, so I will take only the steps I need to disable them. You can't remove a link deployment with active users on it. Phase 1. Disable all users that are enabled for link server. The disabled CS user command let deletes all the attribute information related to link server from an active directory user account. This prevents the user from logging on to link server. When you run disable CS user, all the link server related attributes are removed from an account, including the identities of any purse user policies that have been assigned to that account. You can later re-enable the account by using the enable CS user command link. However, all the link server related information, such as policy assignments, previously associated with that account will have to be recreated. After an account has been disabled with disable CS user, the affected user will no longer be returned by the get CS user command let. That's because that user no longer has a valid link server account. To disable all users, we will use get CS user pipe disable CS user. Phase two, delete all conference directories. If you deployed DAO in conferencing, you must remove or remove all conference directories for each pool in the deployment. Each conference directory corresponds to a dialing conference in access number. To remove all conference directories, log on to the computer where Link Server Management Shell is installed as a member of the RTC Universal Server Admins Group. Start the Link Server Management Shell to use the GATCS conference directory command LAT to display all of the conference directories configured for use in your organization and the remove CS conference directory command LAT. To remove all conference directories, type get CS conference directory, pipe remove CS conference directory. Phase 3. Confirm that the front end server or pool is empty. Phase 4. Run the remove deployment wizard in Topology Builder. When you remove a deployment, you must publish a topology that has only the central management server so that it can continue to replicate the changes as the removal process continues. Because you are removing all servers in the deployment, the topology document that is created contains only the most minimal references to the central management server. The central management server is left to replicate the changes out to the rest of the servers in the deployment. Because of this, you can then use the link server deployment wizard to move, remove the link server files. The remove deployment wizard prepares the deployment for the removal of all servers and services. The last server removed from the deployment is the central management server. To run the deplo remove deployment wizard, log on to the computer where Topology Builder is installed as a member of the domain admins group and the RTC Universal Server Admins group. Start Topology Builder in the Actions pane. Click Remove Deployment. Read the information regarding Remove Deployment, specifically that this process is not reversible. Click Next, and then click Finish. Phase 5. Publish the finalized topology by using Link Server Management Shell. After you run the Remove Deployment wizard, you must continue the decommissioning process by using Topology Builder to publish the infrastructure changes that the Remove Deployment wizard affected to create the minimal topology with only the central management server. When you publish your topology, changes are written to the central management store. In the console tree, right-click Link Server 2010 and then click Publish Topology. On the Publish the Topology page, click Next. When the publishing wizard completes, click Finish. Phase 6. 
Verify that the replication is complete by using the Link Server Management shell. When you publish an empty topology, the changes are written to the central management store, but the changes must also replicate out to all the computers running Link Server services and server roles. After you publish an empty topology, use the Link Server Management shell to verify the rep replication status of the changes. To verify replication status, to use the get CS management store replication status commandlet to display the replication status for all link server computers type. Get CS management store replication status. To use the get CS management store replication status commandlet to display the replication status for the central management store type. Get CS management store replication status. Central management store status. Phase 7. Remove local component files on each server by using the deployment wizard. You must perform the following steps on each computer on which a Microsoft Link Server 2010 server role was installed, except for the central management server. To remove Link Server 2010 files specific to the server role, run the Link Server deployment wizard. The Link Server deployment wizard removes the Link Server 2010 files, except for the Link Server 2010. Core components which are used by the Link Server Deployment Wizard. Remove the Link Server 2010 core components after the Link Server Deployment Wizard has finished. In the Link Server Deployment Wizard, click Install or Update Link Server System. Click Step 2 Setup or Remove Link Server Components and then click Run. In Setup Link Server Components, click Next. On the Executing Commands page, the summary screen indicates task status completed. Review the log files by clicking the arrow on the drop-down list box. Click in the log file that you want to review and then clicking View Log. Click Finish and then click Exit. Phase 8. Publish a final empty topology. When replication has completed between the central management server and the computers in the deployment, you can remove the central management server and retire it along with the other computers. You begin the final step of the process by publishing a completely empty topology document, which also cleans up the final Active Directory entries for the central management server. To remove the last front-end server in the topology, click Start, click Run, and then type Stop CS Window S Service. If Internet Information Server IIS is installed and a message appears indicating that IIS may still be running, type netstopw3svc and then press enter. Click start, click run, and then type cmd.exe. From the drive where program files is located, type cd backslash percent program files percent backslash Microsoft link server 2010 backslash deployment and then type bootstrapper forward slash scorch on the edge I have imported the empty topology from the front end server launched the deployment wizard and then used the bootstrapper forward slash scorch. Phase 9. Remove all SQL server databases, instances, and the central management store by using link server management shell. I have removed all the database installation, the files from my link share, and the folders related to SQL from my server. That's the end of this webcast. Thank you for your kind attention.